Um, we've got our H1 blockers, it's the diphenhydramine, the Benadryl, the cortrimeton is the chlorpheniramine. Loratadine, a Zyrtex, Cetirazine, and a Allegra Fexofenidine, and those are the second generation. So those those don't make people quite as sleepy. Y'all, have y'all ever tried those second generation ones and got sleepy? I mean, I, I really haven't noticed it that much, but um, but Benadryl and, and the others are, are much more um, sedating for most people anyway. And then the H2 blockers, I think we've already done that. Some the cimetidine, and Zantac, the ranitidine, the Pepsid, the Philotidine. Um, uh, all of those can can be used for for um for H2. And it's actually the, the histamine that, that um that is secreted in the in the stomach is H2 histamine. So so that's why Tagamet and Zantac and Pepsid help because they're an H2 blockers. How many people have given those before? I think probably a lot of people have. We've talked about it a lot in our groups and stuff though, the difference between H2 blockers and the proton But it's actually, uh, when I found out how that actually worked, that, that it was an antacid, it's not really, it's an antihistamine. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so decongestants. You know, oral or nasal sprays. Um, and uh, you can have like Afrin, and uh, there's there's other kinds of nasal sprays as well. Um, that doesn't take away the allergen or prevent um, allergies and things like that, but it just causes a vasoconstriction to to kind of um, kind of turn around what the what the vasodilation had caused with the, the histamine. So it, it constricts those those blood vessels and then plain tissue especially like in the in the nose, your your um, vessels in your nose are really, really close to the surface. So that's why topical agents like that are, are so effective for a lot of people. Um, so the, it reduces that edema and makes you feel feel like you can breathe again. A lot of times you feel like you've got so much snot in there and there's, there's so much snot you're never going to get it all out. But, but it's not necessarily all needed. It's edema. A lot of it's edema. And it, and blow, blow, and blow, and it's like there's got to be more coming out. It's not, but it, it's, it, it's the swelling. Okay, and they can cause the dry mouth and high blood pressure and insomnia. And also, what about urine? What do you have? We can have retention with the benahistamines and decongestants, can't we? With the, so we have to watch our urinary function as well. So, okay, corticosteroids. I think we've talked about this a whole lot, but we, we use that for lots of things. We know it's anti inflammatory. Cortisol is what's made in our adrenal gland. So, um, it's, it's very similar to the cortisol. And we, we take a lot of the corticosteroids that are a medication um, and then the, the adrenal gland just just takes the vacation <coughs> and lies on, on this chase lounge and, and doesn't do anything for a while and so we've got to make sure that we, that we do what um, as far as taking the medication. 
You what? Yes, taper it off. Yes, because if it, it's going to be, if your adrenal gland is, is just lazing around on the beach and not, not doing anything, as soon as you stop that, there's going to be a, a real deficit and, and you're going to have, have issues. So that's a, I, I don't talk about that. Metabolism. But um, then the, the important part is that the control of the salt and the water balance in the, in the body and, um, it can suppress bone marrow stem cell proliferation. So um, it, it sometimes can, can decrease our immunity then. So that can, can be an issue, but we want it to suppress our immunity in some of these situations, don't we? If we're hyperimmune, we, we need it to calm down. <coughs> so you, um, for severe asthma, they usually do a short course um, for liver conditions. Have you ever had a, um, a dose, a medrol dose pack? Some people take prednisone, but some people take Decadron, some people take Medrol, those packs, and it's a, a bigger dose the first the first day or maybe the first two days, and, and then, then you sort of taper them down. It sort of depends. Some of them are longer than others. Um, and then we've been using inhalers that are that have uh, cortisone in them. Of course, there's still ways of flowing into the zone, and um, so it, it prevents the symptoms of the inflammatory mediators that they're causing. So. Okay, and our mast cell stabilizers. Um, that the nasal sprays is mostly what, what we're seeing, nasal foam, foam on sodium. Um, it, it keeps the, um, uh, releasing those, those mediators coming out of the lines to the IgE. So that's stabilizing the, the mast cell behavior. Uh, <clears throat> so you want to prevent the the symptoms of the like allergic rhinitis, um, you know, about like hay fevers or what we call that things, and then asthma. But it's not it's not going to um, help during an acute episode. It's something they have to take um, on, a, on a regular basis to for prevention. And so just if somebody's having a, a very serious reaction, we're not going to be doing mast cell stabilizers. So the um, the leukotriene modifiers are like the singular of the quantum um, And there's an antagonist called Zyflo that prevents glucotriene synthesis. So that's that's pretty cool. A lot of these other things are not preventing synthesis. They're just kind of kind of going in the back door to, to get the symptoms um, kind of cleared. But this this um, Zyflo can prevent the synthesis of glucotriene. Um, and they, they have the, um, they call it allergic antibiotics on type reactions and they are made by the mast cells and neutrophils and basophils and eophils, eosinophils, they all um, they all have the, the part in, in these reactions. And um, the leukotriene stops the immune and inflammation and causes constriction too in the serious more, more serious cases. So that, that Zyflo sounds good, but I bet it's expensive. Anybody had Zyflo before? Or bought Zyflo before? Because we, we haven't really talked about that, those mediators specifically, but since we have medication um, specifically for it. Desensitization therapy, the allergy shots. You've got a concentration of an allergen just a tiny, tiny, tiny dilution of it, and and they are exposing the, the body to it um, over time, and, and it can take about five years to complete the whole cycle. Like, like, to really get really to tolerate. This bill said didn't didn't really do anything, or so it, it, it helps some people and it doesn't help others. Um, but you do the it is like a type of immunotherapy where you're injecting the extract of it and gradually reducing doses. Um, and she's already said this, you have to wait 30 minutes to an hour in the office if you're having the, the allergy shot in, in the office. And if they teach how to do it at home, you still got to be, be careful and don't drive or stuff like that. They, I think you probably do it, but you probably shouldn't drive after doing that either. Um, and you need to have emergency equipment at hand, like we already said about that anaphylaxis. Allergic rhinitis and asthma, um, 
inhaled elements, of course, and um, it can be effective with with um, insect venom allergy, which would be bee stings and all that. So um, this is IgG antibodies to the allergen that can, can um, block the allergic IgG response, and that's that's what I was talking to Christy about. Um, I did I forgot that I had that in here. It develops IgG antibodies to the allergen, and it can effectively block block the IgG response. And IgG helps to balance it out to prevent the hybrid reactivity of IgG. Um, I've got a couple more. During an allergic reaction, the immune system responds to a normally harmless substance as if it were a threat. In some people, common foods such as milk, eggs, and peanuts can trigger such a reaction. So how does this work? If you have a food allergy, your immune system makes a type of antibody called immunoglobulin E, or IgE. This class of antibody binds to immune cells called mast cells and basophils that circulate throughout your body. When you are exposed to the food allergen, it attaches to the IgE antibodies. This binding signals the immune cells to release histamine and other chemicals that cause allergy symptoms, such as swelling of the lips, hives, and shortness of breath. Because mast cells and basophils rapidly release these chemicals, an allergic reaction typically occurs within 30 minutes after exposure. The most severe kind of reaction is called anaphylaxis, which can cause a sudden drop in blood pressure, trouble breathing, dizziness, and possibly death. People with food allergy and poorly controlled asthma are more susceptible to severe reactions. An anaphylactic episode must be treated with a hormone called epinephrine, which maintains blood pressure and opens up the airways. To deal with accidental exposure, people diagnosed with food allergy are prescribed a medical device called an autoinjector that delivers a single dose of epinephrine into the thigh muscle. Antihistamines alone are not an effective treatment for anaphylaxis. There is no cure for food allergy. The best way to manage the condition is to avoid the allergenic food, read food labels carefully, wash hands and household surfaces, and always carry an epinephrine autoinjector. If you are accidentally exposed to a food allergen, seek medical help immediately. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, or NIAID, conducts and supports research to better understand, prevent, and treat food allergy. In 2010, an expert panel sponsored by NIAID issued guidelines to assist healthcare professionals in diagnosing and managing the disease. These guidelines and a summary for patients, families, and caregivers can be found on the NIAID website. Yeah, that's in one of those, those red flags. This other one is um, advancing um, care for food allergies. Very same things that they're allergic to in very small amounts. How can you be? It's John. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We are never, ever, ever getting back together. We are never, ever. My name is Tessa, and I'm nine years old. I'm in fourth grade. I'm allergic to dairy, wheat, eggs. Peanuts, tree nuts, barley, rye, shellfish. My name is Kim and my daughter is Tessa. 
She's had three um, nearly fatal reactions. My mind and my body have chosen to forget because it's so scary that I could die. My name is Stephon. For pretty much my entire life, I've had a milk and egg allergy. A mother should never, ever, ever have to hold her child in her arms, not knowing whether or not it's going to live or die. Especially because it's something to eat. My name is Rebecca, and my son is Stephon, who's 20 years old and a junior in college. It really didn't seem possible to change my life, but when I found out about uh, Dr. Nuno's research, I really jumped at the opportunity. FAIR allowed us to enroll 40 patients in the multi oral immunotherapy study. We give them the very same things that they're allergic to in very small amounts. How can you be not allergic by eating the food? that you're allergic to. And that doesn't make sense at all. It's scary when you've held your daughter dying three times and to have someone tell you that you are now going to actually physically hand it to her knowing that she, you could potentially be putting her at risk. I've been in the trial for about 10 months now. My initial dose was less than one one thousandth of a glass of milk. It's taking the out, the kryptonite, for lack of a better word, and taking it down to minute uh, microscopic doses, which trying to teach the immune system on a daily basis that this is not an enemy, it is your friend. At this point, I'm at uh, 5,000 milligrams. So your glass of milk is about that high. I'm drinking about that much real milk. We're trying to change the way uh, the immune system actually processes these food allergens. This is probably one of the most exciting times to be in the area of food allergy. It was exciting. I can have 16 peanuts, and that's pretty amazing because I've never been able to touch them, much less eat them. This trial has completely changed my life. I had my first ice cream back in August, which was pretty phenomenal. I never in a million years imagined that I'd be sitting here talking to you without Stefan being able to eat five grams of milk protein. Without FAIR, we would not be where we are today. I think that's one thing that FAIR has been very good about, is trying to get other sites up and going. The more people we can bring in to approach it, to try to come up with therapies, the better off we're going to be. And my greatest hope right now is that everybody with food allergies will be treated. I'm not sure we're quite at the last two miles of the marathon. you still got a ways to go, but you, you know in your gut you're going to make it. Together, we can find a solution. Together, we are stronger. Together, we can make a change. We can give hope. Together, we can make a difference. A difference. Together, keeping kids safe. So that, I think that's wonderful, though, because it, it was just the opposite. We're doing it wrong now. You know, that, that's, that's, that's just very surprising that, that they, things How change so much. Yeah. And they, they used to say that the diabetes, that you, that you could make a child have diabetes if you gave them cow's milk before a year old. Did, did y'all heard that? I mean, and the, I don't think that's at all going on now. Because I don't think they even knew that it was a... I was using before, but I, I, I don't know. But it's just, what? Well, my daughter didn't get it back. I she was six. You can't ask Katie. She doesn't She's like, I don't know. She was 14, I think. Oh, what? She, we were talking about it in clinical fashion. Uh, I know she's over. Yeah, she was like 14. Yeah, I think she, she had told me that. Yeah, yeah, that's why. She was older than my Oh, she was older. 
Anyway, so that that's not that isn't an issue though. I mean, it, it's probably a virus. It probably was a virus that triggered it. But we did have the, the, the genetic makeup for it. So my brother was twenty one. What's that? My brother is type one, and oh, he was really? twenty one when he was diagnosed. Yeah, my son was is tw was twenty four. Viral. So I, it's just so strange that, that it would happen like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, well let's 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 um come back at eleven and all.